Hey everyone, this is a 65 millimeter 1S toothpick and this super low profile frame is the Ion Zero Grav from Red Shifters. So I'll tell you more about this in just a second, but first let's see what she's got. And now that we're back on the bench, there's just a few quick things I want to show you about this build before we wrap up. First of all, you can see that it is a 3D printed frame, and it's actually a really clever design. So I just want to give a shout out to Red Shifters. Uh, I think it's awesome that they continue to innovate on these and uh, come up with a product that looks different than everything else. I especially like the super low profile look uh, with this forward slung camera. It's just really cool. And when you're flying forward like this, the camera can get so close to the ground, like it just looks like you're scraping uh, the ground and that's awesome. Uh, one thing that is a little weird about the forward camera is these props do cut into the view a little bit and I thought that would bother me but actually these black props almost completely disappear from view uh, when they're spinning. The camera in here is a Runcam Nano 3. It happens to be the original one with the old lens you can see that there uh, but it fits perfectly into this mount and then there's kind of plastic straps that go around the back side of the camera. Now there are different cameras uh, that would fit in here and some that would not, uh, but I think they do make a variety of these different uh, camera mounts. So check on their website, make sure you're getting one that works well for your camera. Uh, but once you get it in there, you just kind of loosen this screw, adjust it to the pitch that you want, tighten down that screw, and then they do suggest a tiny dab of glue on either side just to prevent jello. So I used E6000 glue for that. These are 1102 13,500 kV motors running on a 1S flight controller. And those components actually came from my Beta FPV HX100 uh, SE. And man, I really enjoyed that drone. I flew it a ton. Uh, it came as a bind and fly originally. And if you're looking for something that uh, just flies awesome out of the box, uh, it is one to recommend. The camera and canopy on the HX100 SE aren't my favorite. Uh, so I made some upgrades. You could have seen that in a previous video and I'll leave a link. Uh, but those components are the ones that I put onto this frame. And the reason I swapped onto the frame is because the uh, HX100 SE frame was actually getting pretty beat up. Uh, this frame is actually just T300 carbon. It's not the T700 that they use on some of their stronger frames, like on the uh, twig frames, for example. So what would happen to me is in a crash, uh, the tips of these arms would bend up. I don't know if you can see, but the tip is bent up. That kind of tilts the motor. It makes the prop uh, out of line with the others and just causes horrible vibrations. And I was able to fix it a few times by kind of bending this down and straightening it out a little bit. I thought about getting a replacement for this frame, but decided I would try something new instead. Now, when I had that previous build, I did do a bunch of mods to get the weight down, and I think it was all the way down to like 25.8 grams or something like that, dry weight. Uh, that's super light. Uh, so now that it's swapped onto this frame, let's see, it's 
27.6. And so it definitely did put on some weight swapping to this frame. Uh, and that's not great in and of itself, although it still flies really great. Uh, the other thing is the flex. There is a little bit of flex in this. It's a lot less flex than you would have in a whoop, uh, but more flex than you had in the carbon frame. So I thought that might be a problem as well, but it actually flies really great. And I think the reason it gets away with it is because of the low weight. So I'm hoping that flex will actually help with the durability. If it can just kind of bounce into things and then spring back into shape, that'll be great. But you know, only time will tell. All right, quick damage report. I have flown it several more times since I filmed that last part. I have been in a bunch of hard crashes. The frame is doing just fine. Uh, the only break to report on the frame is a little crack right here on the canopy and that's no big deal. It doesn't seem to interfere with anything. Uh, so that's good news on the frame. Unfortunately, there is another durability concern, which is that this camera has nothing to protect it. And when I was flying through the playground at one point, ding, right into the camera. And this is now a dead Runcam Nano 3. So that's a big bummer. It put an end to my flight session. And I do have to point that out as another drawback of having the camera in front like this. Uh, it does leave it kind of exposed. Now, to be fair, a different camera might have survived. These Runcam Nano 3s really are not very durable against impact. Um, I've had them go black you know, where you just see the OSD on a black screen. I've had that happen several times before. Oftentimes they come back after you power cycle them, uh, but this one seems gone for good. I should also point out that there is an alternate camera mount uh, that Red Shifter sells uh, that has much more protection on it than this one does. Uh, it just adds part of a gram of weight, so maybe that would have been worth it. Uh, I'm not sure, but you can check that out. I'll put links down in the video description. On the bottom, you can see these red straps. They're actually a little bit stretchy and those are gonna hold the battery. You can put it in front to back like this, or you can actually go in sideways if you want. Sideways is kind of nice because in a crash, it's not gonna move this way. Uh, it's not gonna bump into your camera for one thing. I don't put these stick batteries in sideways because my power lead isn't quite long enough, but with the batteries that have a little extension on them, that uh, works pretty easily. For a little extra flight time, it is possible to put one of these 450s in here, but man, it really is a stretch on this red material. I'm kind of afraid to put that much tension on it. I don't think it's really designed for these big batteries, but it can be done, and then this connects like that. Uh, these batteries, of course, do not come with the BT 2.0 connector. I had to change those myself. Uh, I made a video about how to do that. You can check out, I'll put a link down in the video description for that. I like to keep things light, so I use smaller batteries. Uh, these 300s do work okay, but my favorite battery for this build is the Tiny Whoop 333. Here's a really quick build tip. Uh, when you open it up, you're gonna take these three screws out to put the canopy in, and it comes with all the screws that it needs. It even comes with the grommets in here, and the screw goes through the grommet. So my suggestion would be to take the canopy off and then immediately put these three screws back into place. That'll hold the grommet in place, and then you can kind of flex the frame a little bit while you pop the flight controller into place. Otherwise, you're gonna have those grommets popping out, and it's kind of a pain to put them back in there. If you're thinking about transplanting parts from another drone like I did, uh, that's certainly a possibility. It makes it a pretty quick build. But the one gotcha is that this camera is pretty far forward. So at least in my case, it's soldered in the back and the wires weren't long enough. So I had to kind of solder extensions onto the wires. Uh, you might be able to flip the flight controller around and put the USB and the power uh, in the front and have a shorter path that way. But that is something to be aware of. And I think that's about it. Uh, I'll put some details down in the video description, including the links to all this stuff if you're interested. If you've got questions, I'd be happy to talk down in the comments below. And, you know, feel free to subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Hope you're all doing well. I'll see you next time.